All right, you ready to get in the Word? Right. Come on, why don't you stand, open up your Bibles if you can to the book of John, chapter 14. I want to welcome all of you that are online. Thank you for uh, joining us today. Glad that you're here. John chapter 14, and uh, excited about the series we kicked off on Sunday on the Holy Spirit, and today we're going to be talking about something I think um, is going to bless your life. John chapter 14, verse 26, and it says this, is, but the helper... The comforter, your advocate, your intercessor, your counselor, your strengthener, one who stands by is the Holy Spirit whom the Father will send in my name and in my place to represent me and act on my behalf. He will teach you all things and he will help you remember everything that I have told you. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the spirit of revelation and give our minds illumination that we would experience transformation. God, I pray you give us a mind to perceive and a heart to receive all that you have. And I ask that after this message, we will never be the same. In Jesus' name, and all God's people say, amen. amen. You may be seated. If you don't have a message outline, our ushers will be more than happy to get you one. We launched this series on Sunday called The Helper. It kind of gave you an overview of what to expect um, when we talk about the person and the work of the Holy Spirit. And, and as I... Um, had said and Pastor Jeff had, was talking about is that most people know the Holy Spirit more out of form and function rather than friendship. In other words, we have this idea that the Holy Spirit is what he is based on an experience that I had with him without in some sense ever getting to know who he really is. And so when you think about the Holy Spirit, or you think about any person in particular, you would really want to get to know them, not just get to know what they can do for you, not only what possibly they can, in some sense, uh, bring to your life, but you would really want to get to know them and who they are. And in this series, what the goal is, is not to eliminate the wow out of the Holy Spirit, more than it is to give you the why of the Holy Spirit. And we honestly believe that if you really get a great revelation of the why, every day you should experience the wow. Most of the time, our experience in the Holy Spirit takes place in a church, when in some sense it should take place in our lives daily. And so if I have the Holy Spirit, which I do, then in some sense, every day my life should reflect and represent what he's doing in my life. Jesus ran into this, I mean, Paul ran into the same problems in Acts chapter 9, 19. He said this, and in Acts chapter 19, he says, when Apollos was at Corinth, Paul took the road through the interior and arrived at Ephesus, and there he found some disciples and asked them, did you receive the Holy Spirit? Now, these are not people that were just followers of Jesus. These were disciples. This is what cross equals X is. It, it, it is the cross is, man, I'm a disciple. I'm going to carry the cross of Jesus, which means my life's going to be multiplied. And just a little side note, we took a little uh, minor vacation, a little one Monday and, and uh, right before we did TBN on Tuesday and we pull up to the hotel. And as we pull up to the hotel, the person asks us, what is that cross equals X? mean on your car and we shared what it was and and afterwards when I came back the same guy was they, him and his guys were talking about it like wow that's pretty interesting and what's amazing about that symbol is that it creates conversation and so if you don't have it on your car you need to get it on your car and if you don't have a sticker you can get it afterwards amen and so it goes like this it says and they asked him did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? And they answered. Look at their answers. These are disciples. They said, no, we have not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. Think about that. They haven't even heard there was this, this Holy Spirit. And for you and I, we have to understand that the Holy Spirit is more than goosebumps. The Holy Spirit is more than a feeling. The Holy Spirit is more than this wow the Holy Spirit is the seal of what Jesus is doing in your life. Matter of fact, 
when you think about this whole thing, when you look about the scripture, the Bible says this, and I love what it says. And it says this in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13. It says, in him you also trusted after you heard the word of truth. And look what it says. And it says this. And it says, the gospel of your salvation in whom also you have believed, watch this, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. So when, so when you received Jesus and Jesus became the Savior of your life, the mark that you are a follower of Jesus is the seal of the Holy Spirit. So the word sealed with the promise actually means this. It means the mark of an owner. So, for instance, I, I, I'll get my guy up here real quick. Let me, let me, let me kind of show you uh, uh, who it is. Come up here, James. James is going to come up here. I didn't know you used my guy. All right, good. So, James, watch this. James is, is lost, and he's, he's far from God, okay, just like you were. And Jesus had died for all of our sins. And in order for James to get to know Jesus, he has to first experience the Holy Spirit because we learn that the Holy Spirit leads man into all truth. And truth is not a, a fact, truth is a person. Where Jesus says, I am the way and I am the... So no man can come to, no one comes to Jesus unless they come by the Holy Spirit. Now watch this. Here's what happens. Jesus is saying, man, I, I love James, but James ain't following me. Holy Spirit, you're the one that's on earth. I want you to go to James, and I want you to bring me to James. And the Holy Spirit is work, you know, around James, working on James. James doesn't want nothing to do with Jesus. So what does the Holy Spirit do? He convicts them. We're going to talk about this. He convicts them. Man, I know what I'm doing is wrong, but I don't know what to do. And the Holy Spirit's like, come on, I'm going to bring you to Jesus. All of a sudden, James comes to church. He's sitting in a seat like you. Here's the message. And the Holy Spirit's working in his heart. And James says, I want to respond to Jesus. I want to give my life to Jesus. And he lifts his hands and he says that prayer. And as he says that prayer, like we do almost every service, Jesus saves his life. But what happens is, is that the Holy Spirit now comes into James and he seals him with a mark. I want you to see this. So being sealed with the Holy Spirit is a mark. In those days, when a king would send a decree and it would have a seal, it meant that it cannot be overturned. And there are four great truths about this whole seal. And that is, number one, it gives you security. Now watch this. The Bible says this, referring to Daniel. Daniel was thrown into the lion's den, and the Bible says this, and the stone was brought and laid on the mouth of the den, and the king sealed it with his own signet ring. So in other words, the king sealed the den of, that Daniel was in with the lions so that the purpose of those lions would, in some sense, manifest in Daniel's life. We know the story that Daniel never, in some sense, was eaten by the lions, but Daniel could not escape once it was sealed. That seal represented a security. We also see it in the day of in, in what happened to Jesus. The Bible says this in the book of Matthew. It says this. It says, so they went and made the tomb secure by sealing the stone. So in other words, they sealed it. And what marveled people was how did they seal this stone, but then the stone happened to be rolled away. And so the reality is, is that a seal, which in those days was a wax of a, of a, of a signet ring, that, that what it meant was it meant a security. Now, what does that mean to me? It means this, that when you invited Jesus into your life and the Holy Spirit came and he sealed the work, 
Jesus saved, but the Holy Spirit sealed. There is a security on you that when the devil tries to attack you, what he sees is not your salvation more than he sees your seal that's on you. And he realizes there's only, I can't touch this because this has been sealed. But what I can do is mess with everything that's around it. And so this is why the devil can't touch you. The only thing he can do is attack what's around you. Come on, talk to me, somebody. So the devil's not afraid of you. The devil is afraid of the seal that's on your life. And there comes a security. And this is why those who have a revelation of the seal of the Holy Spirit, take me through the valley. Ain't nothing going to happen. Take me in a fiery furnace. Ain't nothing going to happen. Put me in a den of lions. Nothing's going to happen. Why? Not only because am I saved, but I'm sealed. I got a security of the Holy Spirit that no weapon. It doesn't mean that no weapons can't form. It just means they cannot prosper. And why can't they prosper? Why did, why did Paul have that revelation? Because he understood he was sealed. The second thing, the second truth about sealed is authenticity. Is authenticity. Here's what the Bible says. The Bible says this in Acts 4.13. Now when they saw, watch this. Now when they saw the boldness of Peter, let's just stop there. Everybody knows that Peter wasn't bold. Peter was timid. Peter was insecure. Peter was full of anger. But when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, look what the Bible says, and they perceived that they were uneducated. They weren't scholars. It's not like these were expert fishermen. They weren't educated. They were, it wasn't like Paul. Paul was educated in all these languages and contributed to three-quarters of New Testament theology. Not Peter. Peter was like off the dock. But when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, when they saw it, not, not experienced it, when they seen it with their, like, you? You're a fisherman. And you have, wait a minute, time. You're not no scholar. And what? And when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were uneducated and untrained men, watch this, they marveled. Here it is. If you want to circle it, they realized after they saw it, they realized, hey, y'all have been with Jesus. What the seal of the Holy Spirit signifies is that there is an authenticity that you have encountered Jesus. You know when, when you go, I, I love collecting stuff, and, and I used to collect baseball cards when I was a young kid. And you would buy a baseball card, and when you bought an authentic baseball card, it would have a number on it. And that number, if they only did 300, would say 59 out of 300. And that seal that was on that baseball card came with the certificate of authenticity, which meant that if I wanted to turn it in and cash it out, the buyer would ask me, do you have the seal that came with that card that proves that this is not a duplicate? This is actually authentic. Now, when I would bring the seal and I would turn it in with the baseball card that I had, they would give me the value of its originality because it's 59 out of 300. And that seal gives them the proof that what card I'm giving them is authentic. Listen to me. What sign do people have that causes them to look at you and say, that's authentic? 
Because when it's all said and done, when the Holy Spirit seals the work, you are a number out of the rest. So could you imagine Jesus? He's sitting around with 99 people and he's missing one. And what does he do? He leaves the 99 because he has to go find that one that's authentic. That is a number that sits there and says there's a completion if I bring it back. And when he does, it is sealed by the Holy Spirit, which means there's an authenticity that this is real. When you have the Holy Spirit sealed in your heart, there's an authenticity that when people see your life, they're going, this wasn't made up. This wasn't fabricated. Come on, this right here, this wasn't emotional. No, this is authentic. This is a real transformation right here that took place. Why? Because the seal brings the truth of authenticity. When a king in those days would send a letter, and maybe it's to free a slave or it's to buy something, they would check the authenticity of the seal to make sure it came from the king. See, here's what you got to realize. People are looking at your seal and they're asking, is this person who claims who they are authentic? Come on, talk. Because here's the deal. We got a lot of Christians today who have a seal, but it ain't authentic. And this is why they're defeated. Because the king cannot back up what's not authentic. But if it's authentic, then the king had sealed it. Which means there has to be a security. Which means he has to make sure he protects you. And this is why, this is why you can be attacked but nothing ever happens. And people look at you and go, how is it that you got out of what you got out of untouched, unscathed? You want to know why? Because you had a seal of authenticity. So not only does the seal mean one of security and authenticity, but the third truth is that it is a seal of authority. Oh, we're going there now. Look what the Bible says. The Bible says this in Ephesians 6.20. For which I am an ambassador in chains, that in it, in what? What's in it? What's in it? That in it, I may speak what? Come on, I may speak what? What marveled the people when they saw John and Peter was that they spoke boldly. As I what? As I ought to speak. Now, it doesn't say a senator, doesn't say a representative. It says an ambassador because an ambassador in a kingdom is the only position that's never elected by the people. They have to be hand chosen by the king. So let's go back. James was a sinner. And James was lost. And if I'm God, I'm not lost. James is lost. But I'm looking for James because I have a plan for James' life. So when the Holy Spirit comes to James and James is in service and the Holy Spirit is convicting him, James is sitting there going, I'm going to respond. James chooses God and James accepts but the choice was never there 
unless God made it first. So the fact that God would never leave James was the sign he had in mind, I got to choose him. And so when James was all jacked up when he came to Jesus, that didn't determine the way God feels. God, Jesus saved him, and the Holy Spirit sealed him. And now James has a mark on his life, which means security, which means authenticity, now means authority. So James is my ambassador now. All of a sudden, James starts talking and praying and speaking and declaring. And the enemy's looking at James and going, what gives you the right to rebuke me? What gives you the right to tell me to lay off your children? What gives you the right to sit there and declare that that door be open? What gives you the right? And all James says is, I'm sealed. I got the seal. That's what gives me the right. What gives me the right is that I got the mark of God, that I am his ambassador here on earth. And so therefore, I could speak it, and heaven has given me the authority to back it up. Come on, talk to me. Now watch this. An ambassador carries a card, and that card is the seal of the United States. And when he shows people that card, this is my seal, it gets him past doors that if he didn't have that seal, he would not be able to get past Can I tell you that you didn't get past these doors because it was you. You got past these doors because there was a seal that let you get past those things because you got the mark of heaven on your life. So, 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 so. So James has the mark of an ambassador. Now James realizes This is the mark I got. I I have security. I have authenticity. I have authority. But it all encompasses within this last truth, which is ownership. Because here's what happened when you said, when you came to Jesus, you said, Lord, I can't do this on my own. He says, yay, you finally realized that. (laughs) Lord, I tried, but I just can't do it. Yay. And here's what you said. Here's what you said. Lord, I give you my life. And the Lord goes, okay. Do you know what that means? Lord, what, what does that mean? Lord. It means I give you my life. He goes, no, no, what does it mean? When you said, I'm giving you my life, it means you own me. Like, you own me, Lord. Really? Yeah, I I own you. I just want you to know that. And Ephesians says this. It is in Christ... That you, once you heard the truth and believed it, this message of salvation, found yourselves home, free signed, sealed, and delivered. By who? You signed your life over. Here's my life. Okay. Which means you don't own your life. You can't tell where you can't, you cannot tell your life where it should go because you don't own it. Oh, Lord, I want to do this. Oh, no, no, you don't own your life. Uh-huh. Can't do that. No, no. And watch what it says. The signet, signet, the mark from God is the first installment of what's coming. Watch this. You got to see this. A reminder that we'll get everything God has planned for us. A praising and glorious life.
God has a plan for your life or you'd be born. But you'll never get to it without the mark. The mark is what opens up the doors. And then what happens is, is you gave your heart to him. This seal is a reminder you don't belong to yourself. So why does God have to protect you? Because you're his property. Why does God have to provide for you? Because you're his child. Why does God have to direct your path? Because he's your leader. Why does God have to bless you? Because would you want your kids to suffer? So this mark is the fact that you belong to somebody who is greater than yourself that in some sense, watch this, what happens is, is this now says you are the responsibility of the king. You got a seal that when I look at your life, as much as I want to credit you for what you've done, I can't. As much as I may start hating on your favor, I shouldn't. The fact that I'm sitting there getting mad that you're blessed, I shouldn't. The reason why is because all I got to do is look at your mark and go, oh, that's not you. That's the fact that you belong to a king that lavishes, he loves you, and has blessed your life. And so you can't take credit for what God's done for your life. Why? Because you didn't make it up. He gave it to you. And the reason why he gave it to you is because guess what? You bear his mark. <laughs> Do you think God's mark on people's lives, he wants them to be struggling, jacked up, not well? What good representation is that? Ain't nobody would want that mark. But when someone sees someone who's favored, full of joy, going through a storm, and still got a smile on their face, come on, all hell's breaking loose around their life, but they still got praise up in them. That's the mark somebody wants. Because it signifies the fact that, man, look it. I am, I am taken care of. And here's what's amazing. What's amazing is that the seal cannot be reversed. Come on. I'm going to say this. The seal cannot be reversed. Once it's given, it's there. But I could tell you what it does do. James has the ability every day to sit there and say, I'm good with being saved, but I don't know if I want to carry my seal. Now, all of a sudden, James goes from being a marked man to an unmarked man. And this is why you got a lot of Christians who are saved but unmarked, because they've decided I don't want people to see my seal because if people see my seal, they're going to realize I belong to somebody else. And then what happens is, is all of a sudden, I want to start doing the things I want to do and I want to go the places I want to go. And then when you go and you realize, my Lord, why am I getting hit so hard? It's simple. You have no security. You have no authenticity. You have no authority. And guess what? You've decided I want to own my own life. And God says, you want to own your own life? That's good. Guess what's going to, guess what's going to come with that package? You're not going to let me fight for you. You're not going to, you're, you're, people are not going to see that you're mine. And guess what? I'm just going to have to let you go through it. And every one of us have been saved, but it's hit our seal. And this is why you landed up coming back to church more broken than you did the first time. And this is why some of you, I hate to say it, but are in the middle right now 
in relationships that are wrong, that are, in the, are doing things that you know does not go with the mark of that seal. And what you're doing is you're sitting there and you're saying, you know, I'm going to risk everything because I want to take care of my feelings. And I want to validate my feelings by doing things that sexually I shouldn't be doing outside of marriage to validate my security that's inside of you. And all you're really doing, here's what you're doing. You're just taking ownership of your own self by saying, I can handle it. I'm good. Here's, what you're not, here's what's going to happen. You're going to get to the place of a breaking point that you're not going to be able to handle it. And guess what? When, 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 when all you are are just a bunch of broken pieces, you're no longer attractive no more. And all you could do is give somebody a piece of your life, but you can't give them your whole life and therefore therefore if you can't give someone your whole life because all you can do is give them a piece of your life then you get this sense of entitlement that you get mad at them because you're asking them for their whole life but you're only giving them a piece of your life that's called entitlement okay and here's what you got to realize you got to realize that the Lord will allow you hey you want to do that it's okay you want to take ownership of your life that's okay hey you know what I'm the one that owns everything because I'm the one that gave it to you you didn't create you didn't you didn't you didn't buy the house you may have bought it you may have bought your house but I'm the one that created it oh pastor Obed, how did God create my house what did you create trees you didn't create trees. God created trees. You know, what, you, know what, you know what lumber people did? They took a tree, they made it into lumber, and they built you a house. God owns everything, okay? But when you want to take ownership, well, I'm going to hold on to what's God's because I want to keep it for myself. God says, okay, you want that? Then guess what? There goes your authority. There goes your authenticity. And, 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 and there goes your ownership. You could do that. You could do it all you want. But here's the problem. People won't see the mark. And you're going to realize one day when you wake up, the devil's not afraid of you. He's afraid of the mark. Because if that mark is on your life, he can't touch you. He can't touch you. He can't touch your family. He can't touch your children because your life has been marked by that. And this is why. This is why the enemy has done everything he can to confuse the church about the Holy Spirit. Let's just make the Holy Spirit more about feelings. Let's just make the Holy Spirit about goosebumps. Let's just make the Holy Spirit about people falling out. Praise God. That ain't the Holy Spirit. Can I give you a revelation on that? I said, can I give you a revelation on that? The only two times in Scripture that somebody fell backwards was that there was both two times of unbelief. Unbelief falls backwards. David believed he fell forward. You want me to prove it to you? I'm not against it, but do you want me to prove it to you? I'm a Bible man, okay? I'm a Bible man. I believe in all those experiences. But the problem is you can't turn an experience into a doctrine. Jesus, he was hid by the disciples. And the fact that we knew, the fact that we know in every translation we know that the Roman soldiers could not see him is that they'd have never asked the question, where is this Jesus of Nazareth? Because if they would have saw him, they'd have never asked, where is he? So he's surrounded by the disciples. The Roman soldiers can't see him, so they ask him the question, where is this Jesus of Nazareth? They came to arrest him, which means they didn't believe. And the Bible says, in every translation, read your Greek. And the Bible says, and he stepped amongst the crowd. And he says, I am he. And when he identified his presence, the Bible says, and the soldiers fell backwards. The fact that someone falls backwards in the spirit is the fact that there has to be first the presence of Jesus. Secondly, that person has to be in a position where they don't believe. Now, can I, can I teach? Teach, pastor. I'm going to teach. It's a good thrill. It's great. There's nothing wrong with that. And there's nothing wrong with people falling backwards. But you can't make that your experience because I don't need to fall backwards because I already believe. Now, if I, there is an area in my life that I'm struggling to believe and hands get laid on me, if I fall backwards, it's a sign I didn't believe. I sure better get up 
with that type of experience right. and belief. Right. Right. Am I right? So it's not the fact, oh, I believe in Jesus, so I'm never going to fall backwards. No, there's going to be areas in your life that you don't believe. And you may need an experience of the Holy Spirit that way, but it shouldn't happen every single time. Because if it's happening every single time, you don't have a faith problem, you have a belief problem. See, what I'm trying to do is trying to teach the why, not the wow. Because you've experienced the wow without ever knowing the why. And the Holy Spirit, the enemy does not want you to know the power of a seal. Because if he can get you to understand the revelation of the power of the seal, you can walk through any trial in every, any storm and not be moved by it. But if you're experience on the Holy Spirit is feeling-based rather than feeling-based, uh -huh. then the problem is, is that you're going to look for the next feeling rather than the next feeling. Right. But if I don't feel him, it ain't here. No, I don't need to feel him. He filled me. Right. Amen. This is why you can't, this is why most Christians struggle to live faith on Mondays, uh -huh. on Tuesdays. Because their experience is a feeling rather than a feeling. If I'm filled, I can face my Mondays. See, John said it like this. I still have many things to tell you, but you can't handle them now. But when the friend comes, the spirit of truth, he will take you by the hand. And he will what? Come on, he will what? Into all what? Into all truth. He won't draw attention to himself because he don't do that. But will make sense about what is about to happen. And indeed, out of all that have done and said. Now, here's the thing. You have been living your life without the mark. So everywhere you've been going, you've been going on your own. And while you're going on your own, you're trying to figure everything out. Until you finally get saved and you get the mark. And now you start hearing things like, you got purpose for your life. You start, you start hearing things like, there are gifts inside of you. You start hearing things like, there's a destiny that awaits your life. And you're going, wow, how do I get there? It's simple. You got a guide now. You don't have to do this on your own anymore. Man, God has a future for my life. But pastor, how do I know? Because you have a guide now. He's just guiding you now, okay? And this is the thing. Here's what happens with a guide. When the Holy Spirit is your guide, it's that if he's your guide and things are going on around you, you have the mark of heaven, right. which means you have authority, authenticity, ownership. You have it. This is why nothing can happen to you. And the reason why nothing can happen to you is because you didn't lead yourself there. You were led there. Pass your bed. But, 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 you know, if, 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 I, if I wasn't led, if, if I'm led, if, if, you know, I mean, why am I going through some things? I mean, I'm going to church. And why does it seem like, oh, hey, the devil's attacking me? The Bible says, after Jesus was baptized, it says, and the Spirit led him into the wilderness. To be tempted by the devil. Can I tell you, there are some times that the Spirit will lead you places. Not to overwhelm you, but to check your authenticity. Is the God that saved you really working inside your life? And then he goes, oh, well, you didn't pass the test. Well, let's take you back. Come on, we're going to have to work some things out in your life. And then all of a sudden, you get tempted with the same thing three months from now. You go through it. Come on. And all of a sudden, you pass the test because you carry the authority now, the authenticity. And it's the leading of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit didn't lead Jesus to be tempted because he wanted him to fall. He led Jesus to be tempted because he wanted to prove to the adversary and everybody else around, this is authentic. 
And can I tell you, oftentimes, duplicates don't last in places that only originals are supposed to be. Are you hearing me? So what do I do? Thank you, James. What do I do? The first thing, really quick, and I'm going to let you go. Holy Spirit in me is this. The Holy Spirit has to show me. Every day, the Holy Spirit, is, he's in me. And he's in me every day to show me. And here's what the Bible says. Watch this. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. Point out anything in me that offends you and lead me along the path of everlasting life. Now, I want you to see this because this is what's important. Every day the Holy Spirit should be examining you. Lord, show me areas in my life that, that I need. Holy Spirit, show me. As I'm, along, as I'm going along the way, show me some areas in my life. Lord, am I greedy? Do I have the spirit of mammon? Lord, am I prideful? Lord, am I egotistic? Show me, God. Please. Because once the Lord, once the Holy Spirit shows you, the second thing, him being in you, is that he changes you. That's what he does. He changes you. You don't have to wait for Sunday to be changed. You're changed every day because the Holy Spirit's in you. And here's what the Bible says. The Bible says, for the Lord is the Spirit, and wherever the Spirit of the Lord is, there's what? Freedom. There's freedom. I just don't experience freedom in worship. I experience freedom when I'm with my children. I experience freedom when I'm just living my life every day because the Spirit is in me, and He's going with me, and His Spirit is in me and going with me. He's changing me. The Spirit of the Lord, watch this. So all of us who have had the veil removed and can see the reflection of the glory of the Lord and the Lord who is the Spirit makes us more like Him as we are changed into His glorious image. I want to make sure I'm the reflection of Jesus. People see the mark on my life. Have you ever thought as I close and ask Randy to come up, I'm going to pray for him. Have you ever thought the possible conversation in the tomb? Can you imagine the Holy Spirit as he's in the tomb? Jesus is laying there. Can you imagine the Holy Spirit saying, Jesus, I'm going I'm to clean your back. You know, the 39 stripes, I'm, I'm going to clean them up. Cleans him up. Hey, Jesus, you had all these marks on your head because of the crown of thorns. And the question is, is if he's king, then why was his corns thorns? And why was his crown not gold? Blasphemy. He's a king, at least in some sort of dignity. Put a crown of gold on his head, but he didn't, and they weren't supposed to. They were supposed to put crown of thorns upon his head because Jesus is the second Adam. And when the first Adam sinned, the curse was that thorns and thistles would come up from the ground and choke the harvest because the purpose of thorns is to kill the fruit. And so Jesus would have to break the curse of what the first Adam did. So by putting a crown of thorns on his head and the blood touching the thorns, he was breaking the curse that Adam caused because of his sin on his life. Come on, are you hearing me? I could teach on that all day. And they could just imagine the Holy Spirit going, wipe that up, wipes it up. Jesus said, I don't know if I want to walk around with the gash on my side. Holy Spirit, okay, let me clean that up. Be like, hey, man, can you take a little bit of tummy? No, I'm joking, you know what I mean? <laughs> and he, I could imagine the Holy Spirit, hey, you want me to, what about your hands and feet? Nope, nope, keep that there. Lord, you, why do you want me to keep your hands and feet? Because it's the mark. So that when I see the disciples, it's the authenticity. Here's the proof. 
every time the enemy comes to attack you, you have the mark, the Holy Spirit. It's the authenticity that you've been handpicked by the king. And nobody can take that away from you. And so if the king handpicked you, why are you scared about your tomorrow? Why are you worried about your next week? Why do you wake up with anxiety? No. He not only has promised you a future, but to make it even easier for you, he gave you a guide. When we stop treating the Holy Spirit like he's a feeling, and we start treating him like he's God, then you're going to get the most out of your journey. Because God decides your destiny. It's the Holy Spirit who's been assigned to get you there. And as he journeys with you, and all these things come your way, they see a mark. A week and a half ago, I was in Louisiana, pastor, my pastor's house. And they're going through a little season with their son. So at the end, he asked me, he goes, man, I'm sorry that you didn't get a chance to talk to him. And I said, oh, no, it's not the right timing. He says, wow, you, you sound pretty confident. I go, man, it's so funny watching him. It's hilarious. And he's like, well, what do you mean? I go, it's hilarious. I said, Pastor, ain't nothing can happen. What do you mean? I said, I said, no, nothing can happen. You want to know why nothing can happen? He's like, why? He goes, he's marked. He's marked. When you dedicate your children, they're marked. The enemy can do things around them, but he can't do something on them. He's marked. So if your children are not serving the Lord and you dedicated them, Sleep good at night because your child's marked and the Holy Spirit's wrestling with them every day. And that's why they get fidgety when they get around you because they see an authenticity. And what you do is just keep on being authentic. And eventually, they'll stop hiding the mark and they'll be living by it. Holy Spirit, show me. Holy Spirit, change me. Holy Spirit, fill me. Fill me. Because he, he, here's, here's what it says. And the disciples were continually filled with joy and with the Holy Spirit. Every day, Holy Spirit, fill me. Because when it's all said and done, here's, here's what it's about. And we're going to pray. Being filled with the Holy Spirit does me, doesn't make me better than you. It actually makes me better than me. So being filled with the Holy Spirit doesn't make me better than you. It actually makes me better than me. And when it's all said and done, I don't want my life being governed by feelings I want my life being governed by feelings. Fill me, Holy Spirit, every day of my life so that I could walk out the plan you have for my life. When I think about Randy, Randy is uh, leaving this Sunday. Come up here, Randy. We hosted him on TBN yesterday, did a fantastic job, opened up his, his whole life. And you haven't been following Randy. Bro, when I, when I went in the back and I saw that bike, the spirit of lust came on me for, a, for one second. And I bind that thing. I'm like, I'm feeling like, Lord, speak to Randy. Tell him I need to bless my pastor. I'm joking. Anyways, 
No, I'm not. But, you know, <laughs> he said, Randy uh, is doing a ride across America starting on Sunday. And on this bike for um, sexually abused children. And is bringing awareness to it. And wrote a book called uh, Healing the Man Within. And he's an author. And he's going to be stopping along all these different states and preaching. Randy came to the church in 2011, right? 12, 2012. I'll never forget the first service because he was in here. I was actually walking around, and Randy walked out, and we kind of met in the parking lot. He was so mad, and he was mad at God, and he, I was so mad at the church. And this is a, a true picture of what the Holy Spirit does to a marked man and allows him to guide his life. And it hasn't been, the, it hasn't been a, a smooth ride, but it really never matters how you get there. It just matters that you get there. And, and, and Randy is there, and, and now he's going to be taken off for a cause. And this started off as a dream, and now it's a reality. And so many people have given resources and time and effort and really believe that, that, that God's going to use him to bring awareness to sexually abused children. Um, and that was because as a young man, he was sexually abused. How God takes what the devil meant for bad, and how he turns it around for a worthy cause, which is good. Amen? That's what it's all about. Right there. It don't make it any better than that. Because because the reality is, and hear me today, and I wanted to save this because I, it, he would be the perfect example. And let me say this, and this is why I believe Sunday is going to be important, and Wednesday, this series I believe is one of the most important series, is because you're either going to live every day by the scars of your past or the mark of your future. And the bottom line is, is that some of you got to stop talking about your scars because you've been talking too much about how many times you've been hurt and broken. It's all good. We get it. But you'll never get to the mark of your future until you accept the mark. The mark is what covers the scars. And the reality is, let people see the mark. Stop talking about your scars. And when you do... People are going to see what God's doing in your life. When you look at Randy today, you don't see a man that was a child who was sexually abused. You don't see a man who was immoral and adulterer. You don't see that. What you see is a man who's been married to his wife. How many years? 34 years, 34 years in August. What you see, what you see is a man who's wearing a Celebrate Recovery shirt because he leads our Celebrate Recovery here at Destiny. It's what you see. And there came a time that Randy had to get to a point like you. I got to stop living by the scars of my past. And I got to start living by the mark of the Holy Spirit of my future. And it's the moment that he went from living as a victim to living as a victor. And friends, hear me today. What God is doing for him, he wants to do for you. Once in a while, I show my scars. But I'm not going to be identified by those no more. I was an alcoholic, I was a drug addict, I was in jail. Hey, I got some scars, but that doesn't define who I am. My scars don't define me. My scars are just the living proof that I went through something that he delivered me out of and he just happened to leave a mark there at the end. What I want people to focus on is my seal of my mark of the Holy Spirit. Because that means now I belong to somebody who's going to take care of me the rest of my life. And that's what we want in Jesus' name. Father, we lift up Randy. 
Lord, we thank you for his life. Father, we thank you that this trip is going to be more than just about bringing awareness to this epidemic of sexually abused children that's in America. But Lord, I really believe to Randy, God, it's going to be a, a spiritual encounter. It's going to be a it's going to be wells that are in Genesis 26 that are going to be redug. Lord, those moments that he's riding 100 miles a day. Lord, there are going to be times in which your Holy Spirit's going to speak to him. I really believe, God, that the next chapter of his life is going to be spoken to him as he's on this journey. And Lord, what's next for him and Kathy, no eyes have seen, no ear has heard. That, Lord, I know that, that Randy has experienced the why, and now you're setting him up for the wow. And I thank you for that. Lord, we bless his life. We bless this bike. We bless the journey. We thank you for safety. Thank you for your angels of protection. Lord, we thank you that, Lord, you met every need. And I really believe, God, it's, it's because you are always proving to us that if we're willing to step out in faith with nothing except a dream, you'll cause men to feel it. And I thank you for that. Bless his life. And Lord, I pray for every person today. God, who's been hurt in their past, who's been driven by their own scars. Lord, who have, in some sense, have been victims of, of, of things that they didn't have control over. Lord, I pray that today and the rest of this series, Lord, as, as, as when we end this series of the Holy Spirit have an encounter night, Father, you're taking us one step at a time. I pray today that we no longer live by our scars, but we live by our mark. And Father, the mark is a sign that the King is for us. The King is with us. And the King owns us. Lord, we're not going to worry another day of our lives. You're going to provide everything we need. Lord, we're not going to sit there and wonder and wander. Lord, we're going to sit there and be led of your spirit. And Father, I thank you that this church will have a mark on it. A mark that's a seal from heaven that this is an approved house. Lord, we don't want to just know the wow. We're, we, we love it. We love when the power of the Holy Spirit shows up. We love when we're overwhelmed by the power of God. We love, Lord, the goosebumps. And, and Lord, we love the presence of the Holy Spirit. We love that. But Lord, we don't want to be a church that's just infatuated by the wow and not knowing the why. Lord, we want to know the person of the Holy Spirit so that we honor the function of the Holy Spirit. Lord, we, we want to have a relationship with the Holy Spirit and not just need Him when I need to feel something. Lord, you want us to have feelings, but more important, you want us to have feelings. And daily, Lord, fill us with the presence of the Holy Spirit. Fill us with heaven on earth. Fill our lives. We ask this in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, have your way. Have your way right now. Come on. Let's just stretch our hands towards heaven. Come on, let him just feel you right now. Thank you, Lord. 